What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to estimate square roots, all right? Now, in order to do this, you need to know your perfect squares. And in case you need a reminder on that, I'll link a video to that in the card above, but I'll list a few here anyways. So the number one is a perfect square, right? Because when we take the square root of it, our answer is a whole number. And that whole number just happens to be one. Four is a perfect square because when we take the square root of it, our answer is a whole number, which is two, right? Same thing with square root of nine is three, square root of 16 is four, right? And we could just keep going on forever. So if you memorize your perfect squares, it's gonna make this topic a lot easier. So if I asked you to estimate the square root of seven, what would your answer be? Now, I don't know what the square root of seven is, but I do know some square roots that are pretty close to it. Okay, so I have seven, so four is pretty close to it, right? What is the square root of four? Well, that's equal to two. Another one that I know that is pretty close to it is the square root of nine, right? What's the square root of nine? Three. Okay, so I know the square root of seven must be somewhere between two and three, okay? So if I was trying to estimate what the square root of seven is, I would say it's somewhere between two and three, okay? And if you wanted to get any more accurate than that, you'd probably have to use a calculator, okay? So if I actually plugged this into a calculator, the square root of seven, you'd find that the answer is approximately 2.6, okay? So as you can see, your answer right here is between, right, 2.6 is between two and three. Okay, so for my answer, I would simply say the square root of seven is greater than two, right? But it's less than three, right? This is how we show that the square root of seven is somewhere between two and three. Okay, so that's how you can estimate or get a ballpark answer of a square root that you don't know, okay? And the trick is just using square roots that you do know. All right, because I know what the square root of four is and I know what the square root of nine is. Okay, so let's do a couple more examples using this same kind of thought process. And then I think it's gonna start making a little bit more sense. All right, let's try another one. What if I asked you to estimate the square root of 40? What would that be? Well, again, I don't know what the square root of 40 is, but I do know two numbers that are pretty close to it. Okay, so the first one is the square root of 36. What is the square root of 36? That's six, right? The other one that's pretty close is the square root of 49. Okay, what is the square root of 49? Seven. Okay, so again, that means the square root of 40 must be somewhere between six and seven, okay? And if I plugged it into a calculator again, you'd find that it's approximately 6.3. So again, as you can see, 6.3 is in fact between six and seven. Okay, so for my answer, I would simply say the square root of 40 is greater than six, but less than seven. Okay, so again, this is how we show that the square root of 40 is between six and seven. Okay, and let's do one more example. And let's say this is a number that you weren't really sure about. That, that's a lot bigger that you're not really sure about. Okay, so let's say it was a square root of 151. Now, the only square root that I know off the top of my head that's near 151 would be the square root of 144. Okay, what is the square root of 144? Well, it would be 12, okay? So whatever the square root of 151 is, I know it's bigger than 12, right? But now I need to figure out what number goes over here on the right. So I did 12 squared, right? 12 squared gives me 144. So the next whole number I could try is 13, okay? And square that. So what is 13 squared? Well, let's solve that off to the side right here. What's 13 times 13? Well, three times three is nine, and then three times one is three, okay, I'll put a zero there, cross that out. And then one times three is three, and then one times one is one, okay? So then I got my two numbers, you just add them up. Nine plus zero is nine, 
3 plus 3 is 6, and then we just have a 1 right here. Okay, so 13 squared is equal to 169. Or in other words, we could say the square root of 169 is equal to 13. Okay, so the square root of 169 is equal to 13. Okay, so what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that since 151 is between 144 and 169, that means the square root of 151 must be somewhere between 12 and 13, okay? And if you did plug this into a calculator, the square root of 151, you'd find that your answer is approximately 12.3, okay? So as you can see, 12.3 is in fact between 12 and 13. Okay, so again, I would say that the square root of 151 is greater than 12, okay, but it's less than 13. So that is how you estimate square roots. So I hope these examples were helpful. If they were, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you still have any questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to try and help you out. There's also a playlist attached at the end of the video, so if there's any other topics you need help with, including more things with square roots and radicals, definitely go check those out, and I'll see you there.